Hello and welcome to my channel, Family Tech, where you get all the tech tips, news, and information to help you understand and manage the technology in your home. If this isn't your first time here, welcome back. Today we're talking about smart TVs and how to protect them. So parental controls on smart TVs, locking down apps, we're gonna get all into it. And I'm going to let you know which platform I prefer for parental controls and how to get all of that done. So let's get into it. So the first thing I usually recommend when it comes to smart TVs is mainly putting controls on your Wi-Fi network. So with your Wi-Fi settings, depending on your Wi-Fi router, I recommend a Griffin router because I can lock down very specific devices and block apps from specific devices. So if I have a TV in my daughter's room, I can block specific apps on that TV, whereas I can open up specific apps on more of our, like our family room TV and things like that. So with a Wi-Fi router that has parental controls built in, like the Griffin, then it will help you to lock down those different TVs. And this is really gonna be the best way to get those TVs locked down appropriately because you can also set up time frames when those apps are available and you can block the internet to those devices during the evening times or during homework time or things like that. So it's really gonna give you a lot of granular control into that smart TV because unfortunately, most smart TV parental controls kind of suck. But we'll get into that. We're gonna dig into all of the most popular smart TVs and explain exactly how to set up the parental controls and what exactly those parental controls can do. But getting your Wi-Fi network dialed in with a router that has parental controls is going to be your best bet, as I mentioned. So first let's talk about the Roku TV. Now the Roku TV has very, very basic parental controls. Mainly it's going to control what is available inside the Roku app, because um, there is a specific app that Roku has that has content available. So it's only going to um, set that content level restriction and things like that inside that Roku app. The other thing it's going to do is allow you to block specific TV ratings on TV shows, but only if you have an antenna plugged into that TV. So if it's a Roku TV, you have the antenna plugged in, it's going to set those content filters on any of those broadcast channels. But that's about it. It's not going to set that content filter on Netflix or on Hulu or anything like that. So that's the basics of what the Roku TV app can do with regards to parental controls. You will be able to put a pin on downloading some apps. While Roku is actually my favorite TV operating system, it's probably the most limited when it comes to parental controls. The rest of them aren't that great, but there are some good features on some of these other ones. I love the user interface of the Roku. They really could do some work with this parental control. So next on my list is Google TV, and a lot of TVs these days are going Going is, you know, so if you buy, say, a Sony TV or something like that, it might have a Roku built in, it might have a Google TV built in, or might have the Amazon Fire TV built in. So those are kind of the three main ones that are on most of the biggest brands. Um, so if you go buy like a TCL TV, it could have Roku built in or it could have Google TV built in, things like that. So just be aware of what operating system your TV is actually using. So the Google Google TV operating system actually has some pretty good parental controls. Like I said, none of these parental controls are great, but Google is probably right up there with, with the best of what we've got to work with. So with Google, you can control what channels are available and you can set it into this restricted mode so that you can restrict it to very specific apps. So say if I'm in this restricted mode, I only will allow Netflix, then I can set Netflix as allowed for that restricted mode. If I switch over to the restricted mode, it's going to require a pin to get back to the non-restricted mode. And so it's going to just have the apps that are available in the restricted mode that you have specified. 
The key here is to remember to switch it over to restricted mode whenever you're gonna be leaving the TV or leaving the house. So it might be a little bit of a pain to remember to switch it over to that restricted mode. But once it's in that restricted mode, it is a pretty good way to get that locked down. So next up is actually, I think gonna be one of my favorite operating systems for parental controls, and this is going to be the Amazon Fire TV. What's great about this is you can actually set it up so that it requires a pin to launch any of the apps. So if you're gone, they're not gonna be able to just open the TV and launch Netflix if you have this set up. They would have to ask you to enter the pin code to launch Netflix. And so that way you don't have to keep remembering to turn it on to restricted mode or anything like that. And whenever you wanna watch Netflix, you can just enter the pin code and you're good to go. So this is a really easy easy way to kind of let it have both sides where it's going to be restricted if a kid tries to use it but if you try to use it it will still ask you for that pin but you'll know what that pin is so I really like that about the Amazon Fire TV and then similar to with Roku if you do set up content restrictions the caveat here is that it's only setting up those content restrictions for prime video so because it's Amazon and it's built into the operating system it can set those content filters on prime video It's not going to be setting content filters on Hulu or Netflix or anything like that you just need to understand that if you put that content filter on and then open up Netflix and expect it to adhere to that same content filter, it's not going to. It's only going to affect Prime Video. So similarly, if you have an Apple TV, it's also going to do the same thing. It's The content filter is only going to affect things that are inside of Apple TV Plus or into iTunes. It's not going to affect any other applications. So Netflix, Hulu, I'm gonna, I keep saying Netflix and Hulu, but yes, um, any of those type of apps, you're not going to have the benefit of that content filter that you have set on the Apple TV. So you can also set up what apps are available in that restricted mode. Finally, we have Samsung TV. It has its own platform. Sometimes it will also have, you know, a Roku platform or something like that. But if it's the Samsung TV platform, it does have this program ratings lock. And again, people will think that if they're setting this program ratings lock, that it's going to affect applications like Hulu and Netflix and Vudu and all of these things. But it is not. It is only going to affect broadcast channels. Again, similar to the Roku TV, if you have an antenna plugged in, it's going to affect the content filters on those TV shows. It's not going to affect anything else that's an application. So make sure you understand that if you set this content program, uh, program content filter, it's only going to affect the antenna based shows, like so over the air broadcast shows. But what's great about the Samsung TV that is similar to the Fire TV is that you can set it up so that it will not launch any apps without a pin. So if I'm gonna launch Netflix, it's going to ask for that pin, similar to how the Fire TV works. So now as you can see, most of these content filters and parental controls are really gonna be just for the TV and the ability to launch or access different apps. But if you allow those apps, it's going to be up to you and up to that application whether or not it's going to display all of the content available. So most of the time you're going to need to set up a user profile inside those different apps. So Netflix, you're able to set up these user profiles. You can pin protect the parent profiles and the kid profiles can be a little bit more open and that way they can't switch over over to your profile and have access to all of the content. And then you can set up what kind of content is available on that user profile. So say for Netflix, you hop on the website and set up these user profiles and set up the content filter range. Now that's going to just affect Netflix. So say you open up Netflix, YouTube, um, Hulu, Disney Plus, etc. on your TV, if you don't set up an individual user profile inside that application, it's just gonna have access to all of that content. And similarly, if you set up a Wi-Fi content filter, it's going to be the same thing. If you have set up your Wi-Fi content filter 
to you know like a middle school profile where it's only going to be able to access very specific apps but you open up netflix it's going to open up the entirety of netflix unless you set up a user profile inside of netflix for that user so just make sure you're aware of that any applications that you allow you are allowing access to the entire application um, and so then just go into those applications set up different user profiles and then that way you can control the content within those applications so that's my rundown of how to make a smart tv a little bit smarter with regards to parental controls hopefully that helped you out a little bit to help manage the technology in your home. If you like this content, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a like that really helps support my channel. And make sure you're following I am family tech on all social media platforms. So we will see you there. Mm -hmm.